and then drags them straight to the ground. And <laughs> yeah, I do want to say, I mean, there's nothing really wrong with that. I there's mean, nothing wrong with say, it at all. Pandering in different ways. I mean, different genres of stories, different stories that give you different feels. Maybe, you know, some people would look down on a story that uh, is short and simple and provides some kind of catharsis or, uh, you know, release emotionally or however you want to put it. And some people prefer the you know, longer involved stories. And either way, there's not really anything wrong with that. It's up to you know what you're looking for with the readers looking for the time. I think anyway. I agree with that. I mean, it's not like you know any story that entertains someone is a good story. Has value. Or has value, yeah. Yes. Not a good story necessarily. But if it's got a value and it has succeeded at the primary goal of a story. And uh, so, you know, whether you're talking about, you know, My Little Dashy or stories about, you know, one of the last of the main six left or fluffy ship fix, you know, that, or, you know, the, your basic just, you know. Whatever you're into. Right. <laughs> then, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with those stories. But, and I think that for, a lot of us here as writers, it's more fun for us to get into the, you know, I'm sorry, Mike. I'm going to try to optimize this a little bit. So okay. Maybe it's more fun for us to, you know, really get into more complex stories, uh, especially to talk about, you know. The nitty gritty. <laughs> you know, get into more details. The problem is, one note can get old after a while. That's why there are so many notes on the musical chart. A story can't just be one thing. I mean, it can be, it's just not very interesting to a lot of people. Like me, and that's very important to me, that things be interesting to me. <laughs> the way I like to think about it is actually, um, I made up a little thing like, okay, pandering, payoff, and payload. Because the idea of pandering is you get a payoff, right? And that's real obvious. Like with um, Plot Fix, the payoff is uh, very direct. <laughs> but if you think about um, what would payload be if it wasn't the same thing as payoff? And my, my thinking on that is that it's when, like, um, I like some of the Stoner Shy stuff for that, when it goes into a direction that is um, sort of a specialty taste. Oh, so is this how we're segueing into fetishes? <laughs> Pretty much. Is this the part where I talk about fetish? Yes! Yeah! See, here's the thing. I've actually encouraged him to chase that sometimes. Payload for me means that you are writing a thick, and you're writing a thick that could be seen as pandering, but you're not just going to the audience and saying, okay, what do you like? I will do exactly what you want. Instead, you're going, okay, I have a basic idea of what you like. Now, what can I write that will take you on a little journey into my world? And some of the things I'm thinking about or some of the things that you might not even be comfortable with. And uh, going, going there, Halo would be the stuff that the audience is not expecting to deal with. And that's what makes it interesting. To me, that's what makes it not pandering. Because pandering is going directly for what the audience expects and wants. And um, going beyond that gets a lot more interesting. Because it means you can throw a twist or curveball in there. And... Um, you know, go to a different place, basically, like the thing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, um, basically, you can be like, oh man, he's a huge badass. And like, that's cool and all, but like, you can only say that so many times before it gets boring. So you have to actually go into that in a way that's like interesting. Um, which is just like writing any other kind of story. Oh, we're gonna go and beat the hell out of Nightmare Moon. Okay, well, we can say that a whole bunch. But like you have to like actually do something about it, like go somewhere with it, or but, you know you don't really have a show or fan fiction to write that show about. Yeah, there's going to be more than a point A and B. Yeah, 
Well, there can't be an A and B. There also has to be a C after that. The C has to be the end. The B is the middle. Beginning, middle, end. Yeah, but this isn't about algebra, so. <laughs> so it's like, uh, you know, you can kind of meander a little bit on the way there. That generally makes things more interesting. But it's yeah, like, uh, yeah. not like meandering, like deviating entirely, like, oh, well, deviating is good. We ran into loop, so let's go to the grocery store. Like, okay, <laughs> that could be kind of interesting. <laughs> I, and actually, that could be actually very interesting, depending on how you set it up. I hear a new story coming out. <laughs> Half the people in this room have just come up with a new story. I am, of course, speaking from experience. But anyway. Ooh. Oh, Oh, <laughs> like this is like, and this is what I was talking about earlier about the, the clumsy aspect of like nobody has perfect sex. That's not. That just does not happen. I don't care who you are. Maybe you don't. <laughs> well, apparently one guy here has perfect sex. But anyway, no one horse. <laughs> <laughs> Horses, so we'll let this slide. Horses are, of course, the uh, same But, like, uh, it's just like those little imperfections that generally make things more interesting, I guess. Uh, in my opinion, anyway. <laughs> because then, like, you have funny stories to tell about it sometimes, or, like, it, like, looks like it's gonna go, like, the shit, but then, like, you manage to save it by doing something totally awesome. <laughs> or, uh, I don't know. Or it's like something's gonna go awesome, and then, wow, that turned that out really good. So well. yeah. Let's not do that again. But that also leads to funny stories. Or oh. something's supposed to be not awesome, and then it's disturbingly more awesome than we ever expected. Now what do we do? Yeah. <laughs> do, we, do we do this all the time now? Or, yeah, that kind of thing. I've actually had an interesting suggestion. Does anybody, uh, any pony in the room, need us to go over and um, say the fix we're actually known for? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. okay. Do we just start like from the new or what? Yeah, just start yeah, from there. Like, uh, please don't read anything from the fix because we can't actually read anything from the fix. <laughs> we should be able to say the names of the fix yeah, perfectly um, fine. Well, the most recent one that I did was uh, Anywhere But Here, that has like Woo! lots of uh, sexy bits in it every now and then. But the important thing, and this is one of the focuses of this panel, is it's not all about the sexual bits, because while that would be, I guess, some person, somebody would be into that, I guess, uh, just watching Tap and Rita go at it for like 100 pages. <laughs> but that's not why I started writing the story, because I actually had a story to tell, and it just so happens that these characters occasionally bump uglies, and like, that's just part of their relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing that I did was uh, More to Love, which I guarantee very few of you have read. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that doesn't uh, hold back in terms of uh, most of my other interests. <laughs> and uh, it's a big story. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And then there was that other thing that I wrote, which was uh, Blood is Sicker Than Friendship, which is actually primarily a vampire thing, but there was, um, there was like one sex scene in it. That, uh, that was like my first attempt at it, and I guess I did okay. Like, Alex said I was alright, I guess, but the other one in Blood that I did? Yeah. And, uh, Pretty oh, good. right, oh, that sorry. little scene that you showed me. Yeah. yeah. That scene that you showed me that I went, do more of that. Yeah, that was when he was like, do more of this. Mm -hmm. You startled me with okay. this. I never read anything as good as that. <laughs> and uh, those are like primarily the ones that have like uh, intimate moments in them, I guess. Okay, so. Something's on your short time. Okay. Uh, let's see. I've done a couple of them, like, so I should probably start the beginning. <laughs> the first one I did, the first time I decided, hey, let me try this out. I went the safest route and did a humanized thing, a Gilda Rainbow Dash thing called Coming Clean, where it's them at camp and basically Gilda has been interested in Rainbow Dash and has been awkward about it. It really explores someone being really scared of their own feelings. Another one I did, which was a lot more grown up, I suppose, 
was a Lyran Bonbon fish, which right now, for some reason, oh yeah, Tyron's right, called The Things We Need, which actually ended up on Equestria Daily. Like, I cut out the part with the sex, and it was just a, uh, you know, kind of look at a married couple, because at the time there'd been a lot of fics about them because it was starting to become popular, you know, to pair them off, but they were all really bad. <laughs> and they all, in, a lot of them involved spells of special drawings of things, not all like, you know, is it really impossible to maybe write lesbians without a penis? <laughs> so I decided to give it a try, and not just do that, but have them be a couple who had been married for years, to kind of show how intimacy can still exist, even with someone that you have known for so long and been with so often. So I could say to the audience, hey, married people have sex too, just like your parents did every time you were out of the house. Oh, wow. Or, or sometimes it's unfortunate, like, while you're trying to sleep. Yeah. Oh, I'm very sorry. <laughs> but, let's see. I think after that I went into more some FOE stuff. Like, the one that probably most of you have read is 20.5, a mare worth fighting for. Yeah, those three. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it. Uh, in Fall of Equestria, little Pip meets a girl, falls in love, really quickly, and uh, things escalate, and well, it ends up leading off in a little bit of a cliffhanger in the middle of the chapter where things are getting intimate. And someone came up to me on 4chan, in the way that they do on 4chan, and says, Hey, Ponce, I like the Lyra and Bon Bon thing. Why don't you do something for Little Pit? She has all this bad stuff happen to her. Let's see some of the good. And I, of course, didn't want to do it. So I'm like, well, you know, it's another author's characters. I really don't want to do that without their permission. So I go up to the comments in the story and be like, uh, Hey, K-Cat. Would it be okay if I wrote something showing the first sex between Little Pip and Amish? And I'm like, ha problem solved. And then she said yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so it began. And I'm like, uh, okay, uh, well, here we go. And it turned out to be pretty fun, actually. I got to getting ahead of this character who wasn't mine, I mean, most of the characters aren't mine, but someone who's really not mine, and someone who I only know through this limited scope of this one story. And it was quite challenging, it was also quite a blast. Especially since I really wanted to maintain the other author's um, personal interest that seems to show up a lot, like, uh, in case you didn't notice in FOE, a lot of embarrassing things happened a little bit in intimate ways. So I um, came up with some certain things to make sure that her first time was as uncomfortable as possible. And people said, yeah. And it was a lot of fun. And then the next thing I worked on after that was anywhere but here with this fella. There's Second Story, yeah. which is Odd and Ed, which shows how, you know, Tap and Rita, the main characters, meet up, and the first time that they met up, and just really explore their characters as they grow in various ways. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, uh, that actually that actually wasn't a fat joke. No, 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 not yet. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, so, like I said, sex my story has always been about character exploration, being all like, okay, what can I say about these people by showing what they do when no one else is around, or when some other people are around for more exhibitionist characters? Yeah. <laughs> Who's looking at me? Yeah, it's your turn. <laughs>